I am so excited because today I am going to show you how to engrave Christmas ornaments. This is going to take you step by step and I am going to share some tips with you guys you don't want to miss. So hang out with me. For step one, we need supplies, which includes ornaments, of course. Now listen up, the ones I recommend are glass. They're not plastic. I like the way glass engraves better. The size on these are 80 millimeters, which are some of the larger ones because I like having a lot of room to engrave on. The next piece we need is a jig or some way to hold the ornament while it engraves. Now this is a 3D printed jig I got my friend to make me. You can buy these on Etsy probably for about four or five bucks. And if you don't want to do this, you can use some other makeshift things you have around the house to make this work. I just like this because it's simple and it does the job. And obviously you need a laser if you didn't get that already. <laughs> I am using the Extel F1 Ultra and it works great because of the Galvo style system and we're going to get to work guys. Let's go. Oh my gosh, how could I forget? We also need some paint. Now I am using some different spray paint right here because we are going to experiment and stay to the end because I got something here I can't show you. It's going to be super cool and I can't wait for you guys to see. Let's go for real this time. The next step is to put the jig down in your laser engraving bed. Now, if I was smart, I would take some screws and screw this in to securely attach it. Now we are going to take the ornament and place it in here. Now this jig is a little small, but it still works. And like I said, if you need something else, here is a tea strainer that I pulled from the kitchen. This will work, it's not idea, but it still works. So just be innovative if you can't get your hands on one of these jigs. Now I'm going to focus the laser, there we go. And the next step is to get this straight. We don't want it down like this, we don't want it too far up, we want the head of this to be directly in line with the back plate of this laser. So we are going to eyeball this. That's looking pretty good. Now let's line this up and hop on the computer. Let's take a look at our design right quick. As we open Creative Space, you can see that I already have a live preview of the Christmas ornament. The design that I am using is this Christmas blend hot cocoa. I like this design because it's round and it's going to fit on the ornament really well. The image I got came from a bundle on Etsy which has 165 designs for like $1.60 or something like that. So we have a ton of designs to choose from and if you are just starting out, I recommend you do the same. I will post a link below. So we have the design here and the settings I am using is power 60, speed 1800, and the lines per centimeter 300. I did some research from other talented YouTubers and I found that this setting worked the best. So now we're just going to drag this over on the ornament and resize it. And something I want to point out guys, we can't make the design too large right here because it's going to engrave over the sphere of this ornament. So we want to make it small enough to where it fits on, but big enough where it won't be too small if that makes sense. Okay, I got this right about in the center here and I know on the camera it looks like the design is pulled way down, but that is right on top of it. And we may be pushing it on how big I made this design, but let's see what happens. And there is a framing feature on the F1 Ultra which shows us where the design is going to be engraved alongside the camera. Now on some ornaments you will not be able to see completely where this engraving will be. So the trick to get past that is to take a napkin and just lightly put over this which I am moving this all around and it will give you a better idea of where this is going to be engraved at. On this material, you can see it really good, but just keep that in mind if you cannot see what's going on. Wow, look at this guys. This turned out super good. So the next thing we are going to do is to spray this with alcohol. And man, this looks great. Okay guys, we are going to take the top off. And this next part, we are going to paint this. I'm actually going to try some of this spray paint. Now I did pick up some of this looking glass silver, but I'm gonna try that on the next one. So what we are going to do here, if I can do this on camera, is shake this up, which I've done this off camera, and put the nozzle in there and spray. And let's see if I can get this all ready. You guys see that? I'm not sure if the camera is picking that up, but that is already 
coming to life there. We may have to turn this a little bit so that paint will drip down. So anyway, that is already looking better. I got it on my finger there. That is great. I'm going to hit this a few more times um, in an angle that I can actually get to here. There we go. Holy moly. So I put a ton in there. You just want to put the paint in there and just wash it around. So guys, don't overfill it like I did. You just want to let that paint settle to the side and just roll it around. And that is looking phenomenal. I love it. Okay guys, round two, I dropped the other ornament off camera. I overfilled it with paint, paint went everywhere, it ruined the ornament, so I had to do another one, but it's all right, and I'm actually not using rubbing alcohol to clean this anymore because it was flaking the paint. I just used regular water, and it's working great. Let me show you what happens when you make your design too big and the laser goes out of focus. Don't make this mistake. So here we have our first engraving, which actually is our second engraving that I did not overfill with paint and drop and run. And this looks good. The design placement is perfect. It's not too big. And let me show you one that I made a little too large. And so you can see at the top of the letters right here and at the design, that red paint is still on there. That's because the laser went out of focus. If you do want to make the design bigger, you are going to have to use a rotary attachment, which I will show you how to use shortly. Let's try one of these ornaments on a rotary. Let's look at creative space here. If we select Chuck use rotary attachment, we have an option to put in our millimeters. On the front of the package, it says 80 millimeters on the size. So this is what we are going to use in this box right here. Now you can see this little line right here I have is right on the center dot of the ornament. I know on screen here, it looks like it is like off to the side a little bit, but this is where the engraving will begin. So my settings on this are 20 on the power and 400 on the speed and 300 on lines per centimeter. And there are some people doing full wraps here. I'm not worried about that because there's a lot of tutorials out there, but I just wanna show you guys this. This is a bigger design and would not be possible just laying flat. So let's see what happens. Guys, this RA2 is working pretty good. It's just rotating that ornament around, allowing us to get a bigger design on it. And it's looking great so far. Okay guys, we're just gonna take a wet paper towel and wipe this off. And you can see everything coming off there. I took the liberty to do a test file before I showed you this one. And I used this looking glass silver, which this created a darker silver finish, which I am not a fan of. So I will not be using this looking glass silver. I am going to go ahead and use the white spray paint on this one. Let's try not to overfill it this time. So just kind of shake it around and get good coverage. Let's see where it's half on there. Oh yeah, you can tell the difference. The silver is most definitely out. I wanted a different design that I could wrap around the ornament somewhat using the rotary and I landed on this design right here and it's probably my favorite. I mean, look at this right here. I mean, it looks so good. And so far we have used the white paint. We have used the horrible looking glass silver, but here is a tip I wanted to share with you and I haven't tried this. I'm trying to give you a tip without doing this first. We have some glow and the dark paint. And I am so excited to use this. The glow in the dark paint I am using is this Folk Art Super Glow. So we are going to go for this. And I'm excited, this probably will not be as messy as these spray cans. So I'm sure we're gonna have to put a good amount in there. And there we go. And leave it to me to overfill. I probably should water this down a little bit. Uh, to get it to flow more, and I, actually I may have to do that, but you can already see, oh, it's coming through, guys. Put some water in here, and the viscosity is still super thick, so I'm having to tap this and just go all the way around with it, and this is probably gonna take a few minutes. Gosh, this is gonna be so cool. Okay, are you guys ready? We are going to test this glow-in-the-dark paint with a UV light. So I'm gonna turn to the side here, make sure that we are good. Get it good. Oh my gosh. Look, that is so cool. I love it. 
I'm so sick and excited about this. Let's see if we can get this to glow more. I'm gonna stick this in my light and give it just a second and, oh my gosh. <laughs> that is so amazing. I am so excited about this. Wait, that's not all. I have a second ornament that I engraved that I made too big. Let's leave it in here just for a second. You ready? Oh my gosh, that is so stinking cool. I can't quit doing it. It just, it's so cool. Out of everything, look, it's like giving off light. You see that? That's awesome. Okay guys, I know it's a little dark on the Christmas tree here that I have not completed, but you can see these two glow in the dark ornaments are amazing. And if you can't see the other ones, I have these here and here and right here. And these are the ones with the white paint, but the glow in the dark guys, this is pretty awesome. Obviously you will have to light these somehow. I am using a UV light, but even if you had them in sunlight, it would still do good. I can't get over that. That's amazing. Okay guys, out of the paint that we use, I think we can all agree that the glow in the dark is by far the coolest. I mean, just look at this. I know I just got through showing this, but I mean, this just looks amazing. I mean, I can't get enough of that. Now, this was a little hard. The viscosity of this was a little tough, so I would like to experiment with different types of glow-in-the-dark acrylic paint. And I did not like the looking glass silver. That It didn't look good. I thought it was going to be good, but I wasted some money. It's all right. It's for testing. And the white is really cool. You can't go wrong with that. And I believe that Velf creations on YouTube, talented YouTuber, amazing laser engraver. He did a video, I believe he used gold on red and that gold just popped. Anyway, I'm super happy with my results. I'll be honest with you guys, I haven't done a lot of this before. I think I engraved one ornament before this and I'm like, I'm gonna have to try this because it's just so exciting. There are so many people that I've been seeing on the Facebook groups that have been selling a ton of these. For my research, a lot of people have been selling these between 15 and $20 a piece. So that's pretty good income once you get this stuff nailed down. And if you want to market these, I will tell you something that I have been seeing online. If you can put people's names or have their pets on there, pets is such a huge niche. You can make so much money by engraving pictures of people's pets, but I have seen it online. They have been selling like crazy. So I recommend that if you market these, engrave some, post a video on Facebook, maybe with some light music, get different themes, obviously. I used Christmas themes here, but use animals, use things that people connect to. I mean, Christmas, obviously it's Christmas, people connect anyway, but if they have a personalized name, like I said, again, for the 10th time, pets, it will do extremely well. Obviously these are seasonal, they will sell at Christmas, but if you can start taking orders a few months ahead or something, I'm sure that you can make some really good income towards the end of the year. I have already had uh, people want me to make them some because I posted one shorts video on my personal personal Facebook page and people's going crazy over it. So anyway, I will tell you guys, get on Facebook, post those pictures, post some videos, orders will start coming in guys. I would like to spend some more time with these and really perfect them because I'm super sloppy and I know I'm going to have some YouTube gangsters do a drive by my comments uh, telling me, Matt, you're sloppy. So I know, I know I'm sloppy. Like you don't have to tell me. <laughs> I'm making this video showing you guys how to do this stuff and I'm excited to do this myself and really start capitalizing on this idea. So guys, I ask that you don't sleep on this. This can be so good for your business. And not only will you be receiving an income, the other people will receive a handmade item that is special that they cannot get anywhere else. That transaction that happens, it mutually benefits you. So when I talk about money or I talk about you know income, resources, I don't mean this advantageous. You are making someone's life better. And again, I will echo, I am not saying this from an advantageous place. I'm just simply saying that you can provide a service and get paid for it. So if you need more ideas outside of season, watch this next video right here. I will catch you guys in the next one. See you later.